So I'm trying to get my home studio set up. I used to have a little recording studio and I actually did that professionally for a while. And I got my old recording PC behind me here. I built this in 2007. It's got some slow AMD dual core processor. And you know what? It's been so reliable and amazing to me. Uh, but it just doesn't keep up with all the plugins I want to run. That's really the main thing. It runs out of processing power to where I would have to start rendering tracks down and stuff. That would be such a nightmare and just such a pain in the butt. So it's finally time to upgrade. It's 2015, eight years later. I'm going to use the same power supply. Attempt to. That is a, a daredevil move, and it's going to be crazy. This PC is running dual M Audio Delta 1010 PCI cards. If you know thing, anything about those, they're pretty ancient, but sonically, they're amazing. And even more important than that, reliability wise, those things are so solid. I never had any latency issues with those. Like back in the day, you have these Firewire interfaces and USB interfaces, you'd have all these latency issues. I never had any of those types of problems with these PCI cards, and I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep using them. Why would I want to spend money updating my interfaces when they work amazingly? So I just had to get a motherboard with basically two PCI slots for that. I got some Focusrite preamps. I used some pretty good stuff with it, um, but we're gonna upgrade this bad boy. I got myself a new motherboard, RAM processor, and a couple other little odds and ends. So we're gonna throw that in here. Let me show you how to do that. Yes, this old girl, she ran Windows XP, guys. That old Windows XP. I'm going to try to put at least Windows 7 on her so I can uh, use some 64-bit action. But got to make sure I can get the drivers for my PCI cards down here working just right. Because you especially had to use a special driver version to get both of them to work together. Because I got two of those for 16 analog channels in. Oh, boy. So I'm going to start and get this bad boy over here. Oh, if that ain't the prettiest thing you ever seen. Hope you like dust. So here's a couple of pieces of the new swag. Here is the new motherboard for the recording PC. It's always worth to spend a few extra bucks and get a nice motherboard. Absolutely. Reliability is one key because you get a cheap motherboard and you down the road you'll be having problems and you don't want that. This is an Asus M5897 R2.0 is what she is. It's about a 90 some dollar motherboard. Pretty good, pretty good price point for a quality motherboard usually what you want to spend for a while way way back in the day AMD had Intel by the balls they were kicking some butt but since then Intel's been making better processors I know in my video PC upstairs I have an Intel Core i7 and that's a wonderful processor for that application for recording don't need the most cutting-edge blazing fast processor you need something fast enough to run a crap ton of plugins and that's what this will do and traditionally I've ran AMD for a very long time since I was a little kiddo 14 years old I always use little AMD processors and for my current PC I figured I'd stick with AMD and the price point for this is amazing this was hundred and ten dollars basically six cores it's a lot of power 95 watts <laughs> surprisingly I don't think it makes a lot of heat I, don't, I think it throttles that but uh Six cores, man. Wow. So for RAM, I went with a good name brand. I went with Crucial. This one doesn't have all the fancy stuff, the fancy heat spreaders. It's supposed to be low profile profile or something. But um, basically, similar price to the rest of them. Better name brand to me, which matters because it seems like all the problems I have had with PCs I've put together have been RAM related. Blue screens of death, something to do with the RAM. All, almost always. So I went with Crucial. Even though it doesn't have the heat spreaders, I don't think that would be a problem. I don't think RAM gets crazy hot unless you're overclocking it and stuff, which I'm not. Only 8 gigabyte for now. And that's hilarious to me. I'm saying only 8 gigabyte. My very first PC had 32 megabyte of RAM. So 8 gigabytes a lot to me. And here we have the cutting edge video card. <laughs> 
No, honestly, this is like a $29 video card. And now that I'm looking at it, I already I thought I was using onboard video or some crap with this, but apparently I already had a PCI Express video card. Dang, that was about 30 bucks I wasted. But this one doesn't have a fan or anything, which for a recording PC, that's great. It's not a video gaming PC or anything, so video card is a very low priority. I am sticking with a regular old hard drive. This I got a new main hard drive. It's a terabyte, 7200 RPM to Shiba. I'm usually a Western di digital guy, but just this was similar price and it was a retail pack. So I just decided to try that out. Hopefully, hopefully uh, this doesn't fail or, or it's not dead, dead or anything. We'll see. I'll let you know about that. I will would like to upgrade to a solid state disk drive or disk. Sometime here, solid, solid state drive. It's not a disc, but uh, for a main drive, that'd be awesome to run just your program and stuff you're recording to to a solid state di uh, drive. That'd be freaking awesome. So fast because recording is very hard drive intensive. It really does pull because you're pulling, you know, 30, 40, 50 tracks at a time from one one drive where all the files are. And that's where you bo get bottleneck a lot when you're recording. So hard drives are important, but I can usually make it work as long as you keep it defragged pretty well. So usually your very first order of business here is to get your C new CPU on your motherboard here. Unboxifying this thing here. Oh, look at this. Dun dun. Wow, that's a small, that is a small little guy. <laughs> that is a that is a small freaking heatsink for this CPU, a 95 watt CPU. What? Let's get the actual CPU out here. There is the new chip. We got ourselves a little AMD sticker too. That's cool. Definitely throw that on there. Ah, new CPU. You're beautiful. You're a pretty, pretty CPU. Gotta open the socket here. Ding ding, it's open. And we gotta find a little arrow. It's been a while since I've done this. Oh, there's an arrow. There's an arrow in the corner. Put that arrow there. And we are, you can tell because the little spots that are missing. I'm gonna drop this bad boy right on in there. Oh, you can't see that angle. You get that dramatic CPU entering the motherboard shot. Dun dun dun! Star Wars music. Oh shoot, that was that was too easy. That went in too easy. So now I'm suspicious that this isn't even gonna work at all. So that just dropped right in there. All right, and then we just close that, and our CPU's in. Dang. Oh, here it is. All right, well. Let me get this obligatory CPU heat sink fastening shot. Okay, I'm in the way again. Let me get that latch on the bottom there. Oh, it's latched on. Dun, 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 dun. Yep, boom. It's on there. And the focus is crazy on this camera. And it goes this way. Uh, it says CPU fan right there. Ooh, that's little. Watch it like catch on fire or something. And then they send me a letter like, we're sorry. We we uh we made the RAM too small. The first socket dim one. What we want, son. Dim one. Alright. Oh. I'm on foam here. I don't really like that. Usually kind of just like pretty much push it in to the till it's there it is. You gotta use a little bit of force. You know this stuff's not quite as delicate and as a lot of people make it out to be. I've actually never like damaged any computer hardware by handling it. And I can be kind of rough with it too sometimes. You don't wanna bust off any little capacitors or anything. Well, freak, these new boards don't really got a whole lot on them. 
I took the case and blew all the dust and crap out, blew all the dust out of the power supply with my air compressor. Uh, if you don't have something like that, you can use a can of, can of air. But now, what I gotta do is these standoffs here, where the motherboard mounts to, if you get a new computer case, you gotta put these in. And now I'm kinda wishing I got a new computer case, cause, well, these drives, for the hard drive, has some little special clips. And I don't have two other ones, cause I'm trying to put three hard drives in. So I'm gonna have to get a new case eventually, but I'm gonna make this work for now. But uh, you got these standoffs here, and you gotta look on your motherboard where they go. And it's looking like most of them are already where I need them to be. Yep, we got, except for this one here, looks like we're not gonna be able to use that one on this new board. Looks like they just got six on this. I don't see any more. Yeah, I'm not seeing any other spots, so I'm taking one out. And we're just running six standoffs here, six screws. So that's pretty simple. I already got those six in there right where they go. I'm gonna just grab this whole board by the heat sink and we're gonna drop her in here right on these standoffs. Get it lined up. And there she is. Now you can, if you're really snazzy, they come with a back plate you can put in your case. But honestly, that's something I hardly ever deal with. I just say screw it. I don't really need that. In no way am I going to tighten these down with this drill, but I am going to just get them started with this because it's the easiest thing I got right here. Right. Get all these screws going in here. Okay, so I lied. Normally you'd want to tighten these down by hand, but I got this drill in a very easy setting. Plus, plus I'm putting a little pressure on this, so it's gonna click real easy. Just wanna get this done here. There you go. All right. All right. Let me get this screw out of here. It's sitting down here. And I'll show you in a second, but it says down here, very small, all these little, all these little connections here say reset switch and power switch, hard drive light, and really fine print down there. It shows you just where to hook all that up. All right, I got all the little case connections hooked up to the motherboard down here. It's a little, little hard to see what it is, but basically it's all these little wires here. And the manual, I'll actually show you, whoa, way overexposed here. Then the manual here, there's this little page that tells you, up in the upper left, you get your power LED, below is for your hard drive LED, then the speaker, then you got a power and reset button. So hook those up right. For an ATX power. And now this board doesn't have much support under it. So as you go to push this in, maybe try to support the board. We don't have any standoffs or anything over here. I don't know why they make it like that. So just go ahead and there we go. We don't want to bend the board up and stuff. All right, so up here is our we have an eight pin power connector for the CPU power. But on my power supply, I only got a four pin. Now most of the internet is swear swears that the four pin will work if you just plug it in. But if not, I can always grab a four pin to eight pin connector. So over here, I pulled the hard drive cage out. For some reason, I never had a case fan in the front of this thing. I want to add one for the hard drives for now. I'm going to get a new case, but for now, I'm going to throw this bad boy in here. Alright, now I'm going to drop some hard drives in here.
plug some power into these hard drives. Well, that's easy. Yeah, you could drop the video card in here. Alright, first boot of the upgraded recording PC is about to go down here. Power. Alright, I don't see any flames. Let's hit this. Uh oh. I see stuff. Oh, chirp. Oh, monitor. Oh yeah. Things are happening. Uh oh. Status bad, what? No keyboard detected. New CPU installed. So the, C so the power with the four pin works. Is it detected the CPU? Detected the hard drives. No uh, no keyboard yet. Yeah, I don't have a keyboard plugged in. I'll have to do that. Cool. All right, I got some great news. Looks like it's working. Installing Windows back here. Got that. Got that popping off. Popping off. I'm urban, yo. I'm so urban. But anyways, installing Windows back here now, and seems to be running just fine. That's how you upgrade a computer, guys, or build one. Pretty much show you how to build one, get a new case and stuff, put all that stuff in it. Pops together like some Lego sets, man. I never understood why people don't do it. Honestly, today computer prices are getting more competitive on you know like regular desktops. My my video PC, I actually bought that used off of a friend that has the uh, Intel Core i7 in it. Great deal, I couldn't pass it up. Basically I paid for the computer, pretty much what the processor itself cost. I got the whole computer, whole machine. Back in the day, it used to be like that. You could always, always build a way better, way better PC just from parts than you could buy off the shelf. And you know, it's still that way because they put really crappy power supplies and PCs, crappy motherboards and stuff. So, you know, building one of your own, Definitely, definitely got some advantages.